Can we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise? Come on, let's be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. So God, we bless your name today. We honor you and we give you glory and honor and praise. Anybody glad to be in his house uh, just one more time? Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank God for his keeping power that he's kept us. Anybody Has he kept anybody on last week? Has he kept you in your right mind? I mean, you don't have to do a whole lot. Thank you, God for just having peace of mind, just being in my right mind. Thank you, God, for just waking up just one more time. Thank you, Lord. You're so good and so gracious. So we give God the glory and honor and praise. Let us, let us pray. Gracious God, thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be in fellowship, God, with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you, Lord, that you've given us a family. God, yes, many of us, God, have our quirks, our ups, and our downs, God, uh, but we realize, oh God, that you're working on all of us, oh God. Thank you, oh God, that you're giving us a spirit, Lord, to bear each other's burdens, God. Thank you, God, for giving us a heart to uh, uh, making uh, amends, Father God, with each other, oh God. Thank you, Lord, that you've given us Father God, the spirit, Father God, to look beyond each other's faults. Thank you for showing us the way first. And we thank you for the opportunity to be able to do that with each other. God, I pray that you would continue, Lord, to unify us. Allow your word, Lord Jesus, to unify us, to strengthen us, to mold us, to encourage us. Allow your word, God, to empower us, oh God, to do your work, God. Allow your word, oh God, to, to allow your love to grow within us, that we may share it with each other and share it with the world. Thank you, Lord God, for your love. You first loved us, God, and it is our desire to love each other. So as your word goes forth even now, God, touch our hearts and touch our spirits. We open up, God, everything that's within us to receive what you have for us. We give you thanks for it in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Anybody ready for the word on today? All right. All right. Got a few amens. <laughs> so is anybody ready for the word on today? All right. All right. All right. Uh, today, I want to speak from the subject of learning to speak God's language learning to speak God's language. Anyone uh, interested in learning a new language? Ever been interested in learning or tried <laughs> to learn a new language? Uh, for me, I want to learn more Spanish. Uh, I've been trying to speak it, you know, since middle school, I took some classes in middle school and uh, took some courses in high school and even took a course in college. Uh, I've been trying to teach my kids some Spanish, you know, try to get them cultured, a little bi bi bilingual. But, but learning a new language is, is a really difficult task when you don't immerse yourself fully into it, when you don't practice it, when you, when you don't have someone to talk to in that, it's hard to really make that language stick. Uh, my wife and I uh, went to Mexico on our sabbatical and I thought I would try to use my Spanish. Yeah, I knew some stuff, but I found out that there's a lot more that I needed to learn, <laughs> especially when one of the waiters started laughing at the way I was talking, and he started, he really did. I said, how are you just going to laugh? <laughs> so I had a lot more uh, to learn. You know, when we begin our relationship with God, one of the first things we should do is learn to speak God's language. 
I don't know if you know this or not, but God's language is not our language. Bible says his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. I thought, and I, and I think we begin on this Christian journey thinking that God is going to communicate to us the way we've learned to communicate with each other. But uh, I, I've, been, I've been with God just a little while, uh, just been, been journeying with God for some time. And in my journeying and in my communication and my relationship with God, I've come to understand that God, that our language is not his language. You know, I, I've learned to realize that he doesn't communicate the way we expect him to communicate. Anybody walk, journey with God just a little while? Anybody? Anybody talk with God sometime and realize he don't come the way you expect. He don't talk to you the way you expect <laughs> him to talk to you. And some of us are like a person who's gone to a foreign country and doesn't know anybody and uh, what, what anybody's talking about. Uh, just, just, just lost. Don't have any idea where to go. Don't know how to get to your hotel. Don't understand the language. Some of us don't have an inkling of what God has been saying. That's why some of us get frustrated when, when, when I hear, I hear uh, in, in, in the atmosphere and, and in the grapevine and here and there that, that, that I want to hear God's voice. A anybody mm, want to uh, be clear? Maybe it's, maybe it's just me. I, anybody want to know that it's God's voice and not your voice? Anybody want to be able to distinguish Huh? To, to move outside of your, and hear the voice of God. Is there anybody truly that wants to hear the voice of God for yourself? <laughs> yes, yes. I, I uh, don't think it is wise for us to try to hear God the same way we hear our friends, our family members. It's another language you've got to learn. And let me be clear this morning that I'm not talking about audible sounds and phenomes or, lear or, or learning hearable words and sentences. I'm talking about learning the rhythms and the movements of the Holy Spirit. What you talking about, Pat? I'm talking about learning how to understand what the Holy Spirit is urging you to do. I'm talking about having a clear understanding a clear understanding and, and learning uh, to allow the Holy Spirit to, uh, when the Holy Spirit is trying to encourage you, knowing and learning and hearing when the Holy Spirit is trying to convict you, uh, learning to allow the Spirit to reveal areas of anger and bitterness, learning when the Holy Spirit is compelling you to repent, learning when the Holy Spirit is urging you to move out of disobedience and walk in obedience. Anybody want to begin to learn God's language? Because that's what I want to talk to today. That's who I want to talk to today. If you're not interested in learning God's language, well, this is going to be, I want to talk to the folks, huh? Who want to get a little closer to God, who wants to hear God for yourself, who wants to hear God speak into, I want to talk to those folks who want more of God, less of me, God. I don't want to hear my voice and, and my way, God. I want to hear Yo, is there, is there anybody, am I, who am I talking to who wants to hear the voice of 
the Lord. Learning God's language. Well, let's get into it. Let's get, I, I want to take our text from Job. I want to take our text from the book of Job. We're going to look at verse 33 through uh, chapter 33, verses 14 through 22. And I start with first couple of verses. It said, for God speaks again and again, though people do not recognize it. He speaks in dreams and visions and, and of light, visions of the night. When deep sleep falls on people as they lie in their bed, he whispers in their ears and terrifies them with warnings. He makes them turn from doing wrong and keeps them from pride. He protects them from the grave, from crossing over the river of death. Or God disciplines people with pain on their sick bed with ceaseless aching in their bones. They lose their appetite for even the most delicious food. Their flesh wastes away and their bones stick out. They are at death's door. The angel of death waits for them. Before we go another further, people of God, yes, we are in the book of Job. And yes, uh, his so-called friend Elihu, uh, who said, Job, you sinned. <laughs> Job, he, 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 uh, his friend didn't have the right understanding. No, Job didn't sin. <laughs> God was just testing him. Yes, we know the story. We know that Elihu intentions may have been a little faulty, but the truth of Elihu's message is still applicable. That's why, that's why the Bible says, uh, 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 that's why we can't just uh, 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 throw this scripture away. Huh? We can't just throw it away. Otherwise, we can just skip over and go to the end. No, what Elihu was, even though Elihu's message was a little, well, he, even though his intention was faulty, the message was still true. That's why the Bible says all scripture is profitable. For teaching, huh? All even Elihu's, even with Elihu's intentions, this passage is still relevant. Elihu's message was that God has many ways to speak to people, and it's not usually in the way that the average Joe may recognize. I want to take a look at what he said in verse 14. He said, God speaks, but people don't recognize his voice. God is speaking, has always been speaking. But the problem is we're not recognizing his voice. God's been speaking all the time. We just haven't been able to learn the language of God. Verse, verse 14 and 15 goes on to say, it lists some ways that God speaks very clearly, very clearly. You wanted to know the language of God. You want to elevate your current knowledge of God's language. First thing I need you to understand is how God speaks. How God speaks. It's his language. How does God speak? The Bible says he speaks in dreams. He speaks in visions of the night. How many know that God speaks in visions? Has God visited any? Has God given you a message? In your says anybody like me ha, ha, heard a couple things while you was laying down in your sleep. If you don't know already, maybe you need to begin to keep a journal of your dreams 
if, if you want to hear God's voice, and we saying God speaks in dreams, every dream that he gets, I'm writing that thing down. This is God's voice. This is God's language talk. I, I want to know what I want to interpret. I want to understand what he's talking about. Don't throw away your dreams. Write them things down so you can go, go and study them things and, 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 and look at that in light of the scriptures. What is God trying to tell me? One of the Bible, one of the ways the Bible says that God talks is when deep sleep falls on you and you lie in bed. Why? Maybe because this is the one time God can shut down all the noise. You can, he can get you to shut down all the noise in your, maybe this is, he can get you to stop all the busyness and maybe, you know, and, and speak a word into your life. Maybe he speaks to us in dreams because our subconscious is trying to avoid the message that God is trying <laughs> to tell us. So, okay, let me just put you to sleep. And let me just talk to you, right? Because you ain't got no control of what's happening here. Just listen. Just <laughs> listen to what I got to say to you. Has, has God ever spoken to anybody in a dream? That's not a rhetorical question. Has he spoken to anybody? All right, all right. So, so yeah, don't, don't, don't throw away those dreams. It's not a mysterious thing. It's right there in the word of God. God speaks in dreams and visions of the night. We read earlier that Joseph was a dreamer. Hmm? <laughs> Y'all ain't hearing me on today. His dream say the entire nation of Israel. I need somebody to understand God speaks Okay, y'all still looking at me? Funny, he speaks in, in dreams. Reverend Anderson read that in the end times, I will pour out my spirit on all people and your, your, your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Anybody know that we live in, in some of the last Days, oh my God. God speaks in dreams. All right, all right, all right. Another way God speaks, it says in verse 16, is whispers in your ear. We want to know God's language, right? We're trying to learn. That's, that's, that's our goal today. We, we're trying to study and learn how do we learn God. Whispers in your ear. Anybody know that the prophet Elisha, Heard all kinds of loud noise. He heard all kind of natural disasters. He, the wind and the waves and all kinds of stuff came. But the word of God says the, the, the voice of God was, wasn't in it. Wasn't in that loud noise. The voice of God was where? Anybody, anybody know? Anybody? Okay. A still, small voice. I wish I had some Bible readers on today. The lightning may not crash and the thunder may not roll, but sometimes God just whispers in your ear. Sometimes we may not get the answer in a stirring Sunday sermon. Yes, I'm saying, I know I put my time in it and I spent eight hours, but sometimes we may not get the answer in a stirring Sunday sermon sermon. Uh, sometimes we may not get the instructions from a powerful prophetess. So, sometimes we may not get the truth on a big billboard that we're looking for, but in a whisper, meaning the opposite of yelling, meaning the opposite of how you thought God was going to come. Instead of the preacher, maybe God will send his voice in a child. I ain't got nobody on the line. I ain't got nobody who knows what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, 
is said of a, of a prophet, you may hear God speaking to the voice of that homeless guy that you go past every day on your way to work. Perhaps you may hear God's still small, still small voice. May not be on the big billboard. Perhaps if you see just a little post on Facebook or somebody you, had, you didn't think had anything to offer. It's the still small voice. That God speaks. How does God speak? He speaks in dreams and in visions of the night and whispers in your ear. All in all, uh, that God speaks in many ways, but we need to understand a lot of the times he comes in ways that we don't expect. We learn in God's language, learning, we elevate in our knowledge. We learn some initial points on how God speaks. Now let's look at what God speaks. We saw how God speaks. Let's look at what God speaks. Verse 16 says, he whispers in their ears and terrifies them with warnings. All right. What God speaks, God speaks words of warning, right? People of God, I know you got a list of stuff that you've been asking God for. And the stuff you want, you need God to respond to. I, I ain't got no real folks. I ain't got no real folks. Ah. I know you got a catalog. <laughs> of items you want God to look through. Anybody, anybody praying? Anybody, is anybody praying to God for anything? Oh. <laughs> you got a catalog you want God to get to, but it seems like God ain't getting to it. I wish I had just some real person. I just need, <laughs> God, where you at? I've been praying. Knocking on your door. I, <laughs> where are you at? <laughs> I got this prayer. I need, I need you to give me an answer. Okay, maybe it's maybe it's just but 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 here's the thing. First things first. Learning God's language is about listening first and speaking second. I'm going to say it again. Learning God's language is listening first. Listening to what God is saying. And then, and then maybe you can, you may not have nothing to say after he, after he, you know, after he talked. It may not mean nothing else for you. But, you know, maybe there's some, there's some stuff you want to continue. Then we should speak based off of what he said. Uh, uh, our babies, our children, comprehend language before they can speak language, all right? That's how we learn. We learn We learn to understand the language before we can speak the language. Casey knows what it means when you say sit down. But if you ask her to stay sit down, she can't quite do that just yet. Before you start asking God for stuff, Listen first. So you can learn God. You're listening mm, 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 so that you can learn God's language. You're learning how to, when you learn his language, you learn how to use his language to speak back to him. <laughs> Some of us don't know God's language because we haven't been listening to what God been saying. God ain't answered no prayer because you're not listening to what he's saying. Am I making sense to anybody or is this just way? Okay. When you learn to understand what God is saying, you will learn what God is concerned about. 
When you learn to listen what God is saying to you, you begin to understand the things that concern God. And when you learn uh, 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 what God is concerned about, you'll know what to pray about. <laughs> you want your prayers to get answered? Learn to pray about the things that God is concerned about. Somebody can say amen. Somebody can get off you and say amen. 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 You want to learn. You want your prayers. You want God to answer your prayers and pray the things <laughs> uh, that pull on God's heartstrings. Y'all ain't, ain't hearing me on today. I believe God is most concerned about. Can I tell you, first of all, can I tell you, I want to have, I want your permission first. Can I, do you mind if I share with you what I believe God is most concerned about concerning you? Can I, is that, can I? Help us, Pastor. All right, all right. I believe God is most concerned about your spiritual protection and your spiritual progression. Those are the things I believe God is most concerned about concerning you, your protection and your progression. All right, look at verse 17. It says, he makes them turn from doing wrong. He keeps them from pride. People of God, in our dreams, when we lie in the bed and in our visions in the night and when God whispers in our ear, he's warning us to turn from our wickedness and to stay in a posture of humility. I believe that's what he's been saying to somebody. You've been having these dreams. You've been having some, some visions in the night, you've been hearing some whispers in your ear. I need somebody to understand that God is concerned about protecting you and making sure that you continue to progress in him. Why, why is he so concerned about those two things? Because our sinfulness will open us up for spiritual attack. It will give the enemy room to attack you emotionally, psychologically, even physically, okay? It makes room for him to attack. God said, I want to keep you away from that. That spiritual protection. Secondly, he said he keeps us from pride. How many of that pride will stop us <laughs> from growing in Christ? Why? Pride separates us from God. God's not going to dwell in a prideful heart. He said, you go ahead. I, deuces. Talk to me when you get back. Talk to me when you off all that. And we already know that Loss, we said loss of fellowship means a loss of discipleship. You lose fellowship with God, you're no longer growing in God. That's, that's spiritual progression. That's what God, I believe, is concerned about. We've got to learn to listen to the language so we can speak the language. I, I know you want the blessings, and I know you want God to, 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 to do uh, what you want, and, and I, I understand. I know you want it. But God sees the car that's coming up ahead that's about to run you over. You're concerned about the toy. God said, I don't care about no toy right now. There's a car coming up the road. And I need you to hear me because I don't want you to get ran over. I don't want you to get taken. I don't want you to get taken out. 
I, first of all, I want you alive so you can enjoy the blessing. <laughs> you know, some of y'all still looking at me crazy. Look at verse 18. Yo, y'all still looking like Pastor, what are you talking about? Look, I'm just looking at the text. Verse 18 says, He protects them from the grave. You see what God is concerned about? He protects them from the grave, from crossing over the river of death. Y'all, God is trying to keep us alive. He's trying to keep us alive spiritually, emotionally, mentally, uh, 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 physically. God is concerned about keeping life inside of you. Reverend Anderson said last week, we take, we take life for granted. We just think that we're going to get up the next day. We just, I ain't hit 95 yet. I'm just going to, I'm just, I'll wake up tomorrow. <laughs> we, we just, we just think that we're going to make it safe to our destination. We, we just, you know, we just take it for granted. Like, yeah, whatever. I'm going I'm to be there. How many know that, 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 that life is not guaranteed? I mean, for real. Let's, 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 life is not, it's not guaranteed that you're going to wake up tomorrow. It's just, I don't know what you, 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 it's not guaranteed. All right. The reason why God uh, terrifies us in his whisper. The reason why he is most concerned about warning us, the reason he does all he can to keep us from doing wrong, the reason why he wants to keep us humble because he knows that our limited view of danger, he knows what's up ahead. He knows how our wrongful actions and how our prideful actions will lead to our death. And he said, I got to save my child. Caden and Kayla, they don't understand. You can't just run in the street. You, you can't just. <laughs> they're, limit, they're, they're limited though. They have no sense of the danger that's coming. So God is <laughs> with you. We, we have a limited scope of what's ahead. You don't know the spiritual attacks that Satan has on your life. You really don't know the stuff God holds back. You really don't know how God has protected you in the night. You really don't understand how God has kept you every time you went to work. You have no idea the people who's trying to take you out. You have no idea the stuff God holds Somebody ought to give God glory because God keeps us and we don't even know it. Oh. God keeps you from danger seen. Oh, let me, let me, let me get out of here. So when, when you learn how to pray, in God's language. You won't need to pray for the blessing. Oh, I need somebody to hear me on today. When you learn how to speak, you don't got to worry about the, when you learn how to pray, God, <laughs> when, when, when you learn how to pray, God, keep me humble. <laughs> keep me humble. Keep me from wrongful actions. When you learn, when your prayer is God, cleanse me from the inside. When your prayer is God, I don't want nothing in me that is not like you. When your prayer is to God, continue to show me uh, who you are. Continue, me, continue to show me your faith. Continue, God, to let me grow in your wisdom. You ain't got to worry about praying about nothing else because when that's your prayer, you've already tugged at the heartstrings of God. And God, I promise you will bless his child because you're praying about what he's concerned about.
You ain't got to pray for that job. You got to pray for that car. That you ain't got to worry to pray about even your good health. I ain't got nobody. I said, God will cover you. God will protect you. He will cause the disease to not come to your house. I need somebody to understand who your daddy is. I said, when you are concerned about who, what he wants you to be concerned about. Oh, he protects your mind. He protects your heart, your body, your spirit, your, 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 your family, your children, your home. He'll protect everything. All right, I'm got to move on. You're going to learn how to speak. God's language. Understand how we, we've understood some ways of how God speaks. We got a little better idea of what God is speaking. And now let's talk about to whom God speaks. We journey down the text. Verse 19. First three words says, our God disciplines people. Stop right there. Our God disciplines people. Now, another way in which I see God communicate with us is through discipline. He said God speaks in dreams. He speaks in visions of the night. He whispers in our ear. Another way he speaks is through discipline. And we like to think that God is a loving God. And yes, he is a loving God. But is there a witness that sometimes his love hurts? I mean, has anybody experienced, huh? That tough love. Like for real, let's, can we be honest? <laughs> um, discipline is another form of God's language. Who does the Bible say he speaks? He disciplines. It said he disciplines people. Who are these people that this text is talking about? Who is he talking about when it says people don't recognize his voice? That when the deep sleep falls on people, he terrifies them. What? What? what who, who is people? He makes them turn from wrong. He protects them. Who is them? Who is the people of the text? Are they unbelievers? Are they believers? Hmm. I, I, I think that it's all people. <laughs> I think it's both the unbeliever and the believer. Because both of us have trouble recognizing the language of God. Bo both of us, the believer and the unbeliever, have a little trouble understanding the language of God. He speaks the language of discipline to those believers who remain prideful, who won't turn from anger and bitterness. And he speaks to the unbelievers who refuse to acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and refuse to turn from their evil nature. The Bible says he disciplines these people. To whom does God speak, you ask? God speaks to both the unbeliever and the believer. I wish I had somebody who was thankful for provenient grace that before you ever found who God was, that he was trying to get your attention, that he was trying to speak to you. Now, look, honey, I don't want you to go, all right? But I need you here with me, you understand? Anybody glad that God was speaking even before you knew who he was? Guess y'all been saved all your life. Guess y'all hadn't had it all. Y'all came out the womb huh, with scripture running off your lips. But I'm grateful to know that God kept speaking, oh, that God kept wooing me. I'm grateful that I said yes <laughs> to his wooing and his grace that he had for me. How does God's language of discipline come across with these people, these unbelievers and these believers? Well, verse 19 and verse 22, it lists the whole list of what God is requiring them to do and how he has to discipline them because they refuse to do it. Look at it. With pain in your sick beds. 
with ceaseless aching in your bones, with loss of appetite, even the most delicious, your favorite food, don't you can't even, you don't, you, you're not even happy about your favorite food no more. With rotting flesh and with feeling, the feeling of being close to death. Perhaps it's not just life happening. Oh, I need some unbelievers. I need some believers to hear me on today. I need some believers to hear me on today. You have no idea how God has you in the palm of your hand, my God. Uh, perhaps it's not just life happening. Perhaps the reason why you're in the pain that you're in is because God is speaking. God speaks through our pain. God has tried warning you but you didn't listen. God has tried giving you dreams, but you're still not listening. God has tried whispering in your ear. You still won't listen. Now, let me try speaking the language of discipline. Maybe pain will wake you up. Maybe sickness will get your attention. Maybe allowing you to get COVID-19. Uh-oh. Maybe allowing them to feel like they're about to die. Anybody ever felt that? Like death was close? Anybody ever felt that? I felt that. Like, I, like, I feel like I'm about to. Anybody ever felt that? All right. Yeah, okay. Discipline is another form of God's language. And I know that that don't, that's not, that don't go too popular with people because life just happens in this, that, and the other. No, he promised to take care of you. He promised to keep you. He promised that the disease will not come to your house. He promised to give you a hope and a future. I don't care who the boss is. I don't care who the supervisor is. He promised to elevate you. I don't care what the government is doing, what police are doing. You are my child and I will protect you. But if you don't listen, There's some stuff that I got to allow. Because you're not hearing, you're not feeling. I've been trying over and over to get your attention. I've been speaking to you, to whoever comes your way. But you won't, you won't hear. You won't hear me. Y'all, I don't want to get to a point. Or the only way God can get through to me is through sickness and pain. <sighs> I wish I had some. some. Woo. I, I don't, I don't want to get there. That the only way God can, the only way I can hear God's voice is, 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 is he make me sick. I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to have to do that. Y'all, that's why Adam and Eve were thrown out the garden. That's why Jonah got swallowed by the fish. That's why David's son had to die. That's why Nebuchadnezzar lost his mind and started acting like an animal. That's why Paul was blinded and thrown off the horse because God was talking, but they weren't listening. So you want to learn God's language. You want to learn the voice of God. Please don't let God have to use the language of suffering for you to finally, I'm trying to help somebody y'all. I'm trying to help somebody on this. I'm trying y'all 
to assist God because the last thing your pastor won't is to see you suffering in pain. The last thing I want to see is to see you hurting and sick because you are refusing to do what God's with. That's the last thing. So I want to help somebody. Please heed to the voice of the Lord and do what he is requiring you to do. I don't want to see death around you, but I want to see life happen all right, please heed the word of oh, the oh. Lord. People of God, please know that God is speaking. He's speaking to you even right now. Please don't take this for granted. Please don't take this word and say that's a good word and go on about your business. Please take a moment to apply this one to your life. Please take a second to go back if you have to on Facebook and watch it again. If you need to get, please don't, don't just throw this one away, okay? Please don't, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Please heed the word of the Lord. Please heed the word of the Lord. Please heed, oh! Oh, we cry out, oh God, for your people, Jesus. We cry out, oh God, for your people, oh God. Allow us, Jesus, to hear your voice, God. Allow us, oh God, to heed, God, to your warning, oh God. When you give us dreams, God, and when you give us visions, oh God, and when you whisper into our ears, oh God, allow us, oh God, to heed to your word, oh God, to do what it is you're requiring us to do. Help us to remove the pride, oh God. In the name of Jesus, help us, oh God, to turn from our wrongdoings, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, we cry out for your people, oh God, send now your spirit upon God, them, touch them, oh God, remove God all that is not like you, oh God, so that we, oh God, may walk in the fullness of life that you have. Oh, God, I pray for every individual, God, who is right here on this Zoom call, who's watching on Facebook Live. God, send your spirit, God. Send your power. Send your anointing, Jesus. Make it clear to us. Make it clear to us, oh, God, so that we can heed your voice. Oh, God. Break down the walls, oh, God. And the chains, oh God, do it even now. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, we love you. We thank you. We give you praise. You may be here on today and you've heard God speaking to you. He may be speaking to you even right now. Saying, today begin a new relationship with Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Please heed the word of the Lord on today so that you can walk in the fullness of life that he has for you. You can accept Jesus Christ right now and turn your life around. Just repeat these words. Say, God, I am a sinner in need of a savior. I repent of my sins. I turn away from pride. I turn away from wrongdoing. I turn away from wickedness and I turn to righteousness. I turn to you, oh God. I believe that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. And I believe that on the third day he rose from the dead. And that his death paid the cost for my sin. I receive you now, Jesus, into my heart. Be both my Lord and my Savior. I commit my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. That was your first time praying that prayer. We thank God that you are saved on today. We thank God for your salvation. 
And our desire is to connect with you. That if you are not a part of a church home, that St. Matthew would love to have you as a part of this body to continue to grow you in the ways of Christ, to use our experiences, to use what we've learned and how to grow closer to God. So put your name in the chat, either if you don't have a church home or you receive salvation today, we wanna to connect with you. Put your name and information in the chat if you're on Zoom and if you're watching on Facebook Live, you could do the same thing. We bless God for you, God keep you. Amen. We thank God for the power of God's word. We thank God for the outpouring from our pastor. We thank God that the spirit of the living God is yet alive and moving and speaking to us, even when we're not ready for the yes. There is provenient grace that allows us to stay alive, that is yet protecting us and giving us some time, y'all, to be able to say yes. So you might not have been able to say yes at this moment, but as the Lord continues to speak to you, we pray that one day you'll be able to say, yes, Lord, it is I, send me. It is now our offering time. We invite you now um, to begin to prepare yourself to give. We have a couple of ways that you can give to this ministry. One is by downloading the Givelify app to give on your smartphone. Uh, when you see St. Matthew, the, um, the logo, and you'll see a picture of our pastor, you can simply click the green button that says give. You can also go to our website, stmatthewkc.org to give online. And or you can mail in your offering to St. Matthew AME Zion Church at 4400 East Linwood Boulevard, Kansas City, Missouri, 64128. Let us now pray. Lord, our God, you are the giver of all good things. And your word makes clear that every good and perfect gift comes from you. We ask, oh God, that you accept these gifts and use them to your glory. May these gifts bring shelter to those who don't have homes comfort to those who may be ill and rest to the weary. God, we pray that what we give will give hope to those who have none. Just as you multiply the offering of the fish and the loaves, we freely give, oh God, this that you might multiply it to bless those in need. To do more, oh God, than we could ever ask, think, or imagine. We give now our offerings unto you, oh God, to do as you will, to use us, oh God, in your will. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we give thanks. The people of God say together, amen. Amen. We thank you. We thank you for your giving. We thank you for those who may be online and join us. joining us. Uh, we thank you for your presence and we thank you for your gifts. I believe now um, if there are any announcements, don't forget we have prayer at 530 on Wednesdays. Bible study immediately follows at 6. Uh, make sure you're tapping in with your class meetings. If you're not sure, give somebody a call. Oh, that's somebody, that's my name. You can give me a call, send us a text or shoot a, a message to the admin assistant and she will be able to assist you. I will now put you in the hands of our preacher, our pastor, Reverend Dr. Charles Thurman Jr. Amen. Thank you, uh, Reverend uh, Shannon Hancock for leading us in worship on today. Thank you for all of those participants. Thank you, St. Matthew, for being here and staying in it, staying in it. I know it's been a while since we've been together physically, but I'm grateful that, um, that we are staying consistent and trying to still stay together, at least through this platform. Um, we thank God for, for you, and we thank God for all those who are watching on Facebook. Thank you for joining us uh, here on today. Uh, we encourage you to continue to attend your weekly, weekly meetings. Uh, we thank God that... Um, uh, maybe in a couple of months, as we begin to talk with leaders and talk with the trustee board, we're trying to get together sometime, perhaps in June. Um, as a matter of fact, we want to, we were thinking about coming back together in June uh, for an outside service. You'll hear more about that. Just want to kind of give you a heads up. I do believe that um, Shamika Pegui is here and uh, has an announcement in regards to the outreach ministry. Good afternoon, you guys. Uh, so after talking with Pastor Thurman this past week, um, we were thinking of going ahead and doing something, a, a live in-person event for Juneteenth um, and looking at June 19th, which is a Saturday, uh, to engage that event. 
So at this time, we're looking for anyone who would like to come on over to Outreach to help us develop this event and make it as big as possible. I've asked my nonprofit organization to get involved so that we can have some uh, events around uh, equity and discussions around equity issues in our community. That way we can get the best benefit out of it. And of course, going to be inviting some vendors and some um, just overall, overall events going to going to be happening there, uh, such as having some bounce houses for the kids, food will be provided. It will be like a kind of us coming back into the community fair that we can invite the community out to to engage with us. Of course, going to be uh, considering COVID still and doing precautions, the social distancing, the masking and all of that. So I would like to have a meeting sometime this week. And if there's anyone who is interested, um, I didn't see Sister Harvey on here, but normally she's working with outreach. So if there's anyone else who would like to help and so we can develop this into something big, um, kind of having it as our coming back to the community uh, event um, and bringing the community out and of course getting more people involved from our community with our church so that we can hopefully get donations and things as well to go towards some of the things that we want to do and expand as a church as well. So. Um, I'm open to anybody who wants to come through. Just give me a time and date that you would like to meet. Um, I have some availabilities this week and we can get started. Okay, thanks, <laughs> Thais. I didn't know if she was here. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you, guys. All right, thank you, Shamika. Great opportunity for us to get back in the community. We have not been in the community for a while. Um, we, again, we are still practicing social distancing and making precautions, but is an opportunity for us to come to the community uh, in a safe way and to be able to give back. Um, we also will try to couple that with an outside service of some kind as well. We'll give you more updates in the future, but we want to get, let you know that as soon as we can. And if we if we want to contact you, okay, great. Your email, Shamika, is in the chat. Uh, so please be a part of that. Uh, those who are part of the outreach ministry and those who want to um, help with that event. Um, we'll give you more information about that upcoming. All right. Um, I believe that's all our announcements. Uh, let us um, pray. Let's bow our heads for the final benediction. A gracious God, thank you for th this day. Thank you for your word. Thank you for this fellowship. Thank you, O oh God, for your grace and love most of all. God, that you continue, O oh God, to bring us back to you, God. I, I pray, Lord God, that in our devotional time, in our times in communication with you, oh God, that we begin to use your language, that we begin to pray the things, God, that you are concerned about, that we begin, oh God, to open up our ears and be more attentive, God, and intentional about understanding, oh God, how you're speaking to us, oh God, so that we, oh God, may heed to your word, oh God. Give us a yes, God in our spirit, oh God. Open, God, our hearts and our minds to do whatever it is that you want to do. For your ultimate goal, oh God, is to bless us, God, and we desire, oh God, to be God, in that place uh, of your blessing. So, oh God, be with us as we continue, oh God, to carry out your commission, which is to make disciples of all nations, to baptize them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, to teach, God, these disciples your ways, God, and we're grateful to know that you're with us all the way to the end. We give you all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and have a great week. Thank you.